Beloved family, may I have a word, please? And anyone who does not agree with my message or what I'm trying to get you to consider, my messages aren't for everyone. My messages are only for those who have ears to hear. So if you don't agree, that's fine. Everyone's entitled to their own opinions. However, don't be disruptive and don't try to convince other people not to hear a message that may be for them, even if it's not for you. Now, recently there's been a lot of clamor in social media, the news, about not just T.D. Jakes, but multiple pastors finding themselves in predicaments, some more serious than others, but nonetheless contrary to the Word of God, contrary to the best interest of their congregation and their followers. And I love the message that my old pastor, Pastor Johnson, from Compassion Christian Center in Bakersfield, California, would always say, you'll never find a perfect church because you're in it. And none of us are perfect. Well, you also will never find a perfect preacher or teacher because none of us are perfect. We are arriving daily. None of us have arrived except Christ and he's no longer among us at this time, but people have a tendency of putting people on pedestals, making people have the air and illusion of being perfection and unfallible. Don't you know that one, God chooses people who've been through some stuff more often than people who haven't been through the fire. People who have gone through things to help other people get through things because they can take God's word and applied knowledge and information from experience and help the congregations. Where someone who has not tried, not tested, cannot do. They will never know the depths of God's word because they've never been through anything. They've never had to stand on his word. They've never had to call on him at 1159 with their last breath for help and have him come through. So never throw away the knowledge, the experiences, the life that pastors and preachers have and even go through during their ministries because it's all learning territory. It's all learning ground for them and fodder for them to teach. Now, before people start getting upset. Hear my full message. I am in no way dismissing or minimizing the seriousness of some of the things that are being said. Not at all. And if you knew me, you would know I would be the last person to do that. I grew up in the industry. I've seen firsthand a lot of the stuff that's going on right now that's making the news. I even know and grew up with many of the people whose names are starting to be dropped as having involvement. I know how slippery of a slope the industry is. And what you have to understand is they're dealing with demonic entities, thousands and thousands of years old, who are so well practiced and so skillful at their deceit and luring people in 
and deception and capturing people to take their souls that the average person does not have the fortitude, the mental capacity to deal with them. You're not talking about small, minor demons when you're dealing with things like the music industry. You're dealing with principalities, the big guys. Folks have to understand that. But see, one of the problems is that people don't take seriously the spirit realm. They really don't. They don't know how real and active and how much it influences our day-to-day -day lives. People have no understanding and comprehension just how much power demons have. How shysty and tricksters and well-crafted their treachery and deception is. If you notice, a lot of the people from their own reports and the reports that are coming out were under the influence, not by choice. They didn't even know what happened to them until after the fact. And then they were blackmailed to continue. They were drugged. They said there was drugs in the water, drugs in everything. So even if he had a glass of water, he might have been there for good purposes or good reasons. He may have heard of some of the stuff going on and wanted to see for himself what was happening there to perhaps help those who need it out. You don't know, don't assume. There's an old saying that when you try to rescue someone, if you're in a boat and someone's in the water, there's a 50-50 chance that you will be pulled into the water with them. Does that mean you just leave them to drown? He could have been initially on a rescue miss mission to help someone or to try to help steer those who were astray back in the right direction or at least let them know that they have options so they don't seem helpless and hopeless. Look at how many people in the industry take their lives. Now the general public is getting to see what has been going on behind the scenes, not just since Diddy. I'm a senior citizen. I grew up in the industry. Many members of my family are considered show business royalty. This stuff was going on when I was a kid. When I was a little kid, I watched and saw grown-ups doing things that I'm not going to even describe. I had people trying to mess with me constantly. Adults, and I was a little kid. I can tell you some stories. I was blessed tremendously. God always provided a way of escape for me. But so many others, including siblings of mine, were not so fortunate. And again, some of the people whose names are being called out right now in the industry, I knew as children, our family members. My family's huge and it's disheartening because when all is said and done, abuse is the underlying. Fear and abuse, you'll be surprised at things that people can get other people to do from fear of being hurt, from fear of being humiliated publicly and losing their careers and their livelihoods, or fear of losing their life if they speak on what's happening to them. These are things that should not be. These are things that should not exist, but they do. And that's real.